there are three muscle tendon contributions. The EDC, running centrally, ending just distal to the PIP joint. Then we've got the lumbricals that contribute radially to the lateral bands on the radial digits. And the lateral bands end at the terminal tendon, distal to the DIP joint. And then we've got the interossei. Interossei come off the metacarpals on both sides, also contributing to the lateral bands, but on both sides for these radial digits. And then again, terminating at that terminal tendon. Now the EDC trifurcates. So we've got EDC contribution to the lateral bands. So this is the muscle tendon structures. Then we need structures to keep everything in place. So these to me are the inert structures, the stabilizing structures. At the MP joint, we have the sagittal bands. They come off the roller plate and they help maintain the EDC centralized at the level of the MP joint. Here we're in zone five. And then distally to this, we've got at the level of P1, the dorsal hood. Dorsal hoods uh, has fibers that has contributions from different structures, but functionally, the role is to keep this centralized. Then at the PIP joint, we have the transverse retinacular ligament. This uh, structure, inert structure, is just connecting the lateral bands. And its function at this level is to prevent the lateral bands from subluxing dorsally, so that there's not a hyperextension force at the PIP joint but they allow, the transverse retinacular ligament allows the lateral bands to descend for flexion at the PIP. At the level of the middle phalanx, we have the triangular ligament, and like the transverse retinacular ligament, it goes from lateral band to lateral band to stabilize them, but at this level, it's preventing the lateral bands from subluxing volar. So if the lateral bands were allowed to drop volar because there was an injury to this ligament, that would uh, create a flexion pull in the lateral bands at the PIP joint. So the triangular ligament allows the lateral bands to maintain their moment arm for extension um, rather than flexion. Then we've got, again, um, the oblique retinacular ligament, and this is kind of the outlier here because it doesn't have a direct effect on the extensor mechanism. It's variably present, but this is a ligament that comes off the roller plate of the PIP joint, spirals around to the terminal tendon. Essentially, it's linking the two IP joints. So as the PIP joint flexes, the slack in this ligament creates ease in flexing the DIP joint, and as the PIP extends, the tension creates more of an ease in extending the DIP joint.